Welcome everyone to the San Mateo County Office of Education STEM Fair presentation on guidelines, expectations, checkpoints, and deadlines. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Oracle and Gilead, and especially the Hiller Aviation Museum for all of their support. This is our 30th annual STEM Fair, which we're very proud of. At SMCO, we, we believe that there is no better way to get involved with STEM and its varied content areas than by actually being involved in the work itself. The STEM Fair is a great way for students to learn how to do good science and engineering, highlight their work, and share their work with the community, and have fun doing it in a friendly, competitive environment that will yield great rewards. We also believe that STEM fairs are a great way for teachers and students to delve into the world of the next generation science standards. Last year, we had nearly 350 students from grades 5 through 12 participate, and we're very proud of our increased participation over the years. Here are the contents of this presentation. Please feel free to hit pause whenever you'd like to take more time to read what's on the screen. The purpose of this presentation is to present you with the guidelines for student participation, to share our expectations for student projects, what you can expect from judges, our expectations for teachers and mentors and what their responsibilities are, and for parents who are supporting their children. We'll also make note of checkpoints for students and teachers and inform you of important deadlines. First, I'd like to orient you to our website where you can get all the information you need about this year's STEM Fair. Our website is www.stemfair.net. Let's go there now. As you can see, the dates for our STEM Fair are listed right there in the center. It'll be from Sunday, March 5th through Tuesday, March 7th. Our award ceremony is two days later on Thursday, March 9th, 2017. Please excuse this typo. As you can see, we have three large buttons right on the front of our stemfair.net site um, for the different people that might be interested in viewing the website. Um, let me just take you, for example, to uh, the site for students and parents. You can see we have um, all the information that you'll need listed there with these icons, information about project registration, the STEM fair schedule, timeline, different categories, uh, display board guidelines. Um, just note that uh, we haven't updated the website entirely yet, so some of the dates might be a little bit off um, when to get embedded into the website itself. But for the most part, um, all the information is consistent with the STEM fair from last year. Um, when you click on anything there, it'll take you to a different part of that same site, for example, and you'll see the information that you're looking for there. Let's get back to the presentation. Uh, this part of the presentation will cover some logistical and um, import, uh, information and important dates and some information about how to register your project. Let's start with the location of our STEM fair and for the award ceremony as well. That will take place at the Hiller Aviation Museum at 601 Skywa Skyway Road in San Carlos. Here are the important dates that you need to know for this year's STEM fair. Project drop-off and check-in will take place on Sunday, March 5th, 2017, between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. That is our only time for project drop-off. Students that do not pro dro drop off their projects during this time will not enter into the STEM fair. On Monday, March 6th, in the evening, that's our judging period. We've broken the evening down into two parts, the first of which will um, include our students from grades five and six, where their projects will be judged and they will be inter students will be interviewed during uh, the period of 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Um, there'll be uh, an hour break then for our judges, and then 
students in grades 7 through 12 will have their projects judged and they will be interviewed during uh, the 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Uh, period. The next day is our open house, which is on Tuesday, March 7th, 2017, from 5.30 to 7.30. During this period, students will stand next to their projects and answer any questions related to their projects. They will also be notified if they have won an award. At the end of that period, at um, either the 5.30 to 6.30 period for grades 5 and 6 students or the 6.30 to 7.30 period for the grades 7 through 12 students, all students will remove their projects during that time. If you, for some reason, cannot come to the open house um, event, you must make arrangements with somebody else to both um, go to your project and find out if an award has been won and to remove the project from the Hiller Aviation Museum. Um, two days later, on Thursday, March 9th, will be our award ceremony. We've broken that evening down into two parts as well with our grades 5 and 6 student uh, award ceremony from 6 o'clock to 7.15 and our grades 7 through 12 students um, award ceremony from 7.30 to 9 p.m. To learn more information about uh, timelines in terms of student projects, which includes information about um, idea conception and starting off your project, all the way to project completion and uh, entering your project into the STEM fair, can be found on our STEM fair website and click on students and parents. Teachers for students of grades five through eight must request a spot, which we call an allocation, in the STEM fair. The window for requesting allocations will be from November 2nd, 2016 to December 7th, 2016. Please adhere to those dates. To make a request for an allocation, teachers or mentors will go to our stemfair.net site and click on teachers and coordinators. The number of spots that we allot per school is generally based on the number that we've allotted last year or in the previous year. New schools and districts will be given con um, consideration for um, based on the, the population of their school and the number of students that they'd like to send. Um, our space is limited at the Hiller Aviation Museum, so there are many factors that we need to consider prior to allotting those allocations to schools. Generally speaking, teachers will make um, the request for grade five through eight students but high school students will make those requests on their own for themselves. And they will do that um, on the website itself. Um, there will be a, uh, a button there that's specifically for high school students that will be up um, in a couple of months. For uh, schools requesting allocations for um, elementary or middle schools, you will be required to list the names of two volunteers, they could be teachers or mentors or parents, that um, represent your school at the STEM fair. And thank you for that. Project registration itself will take place during the window of January 9th through February 10th, 2017. That is the only registration period possible. That also means that your STEM fair at your school or in your district um, should already have the results by, during that period. Um, we will not accept student registration after February 10th. Grade 5 through 8 students will register themselves on our website. Um, at that time, they will put in all the information about themselves, contact information, and about their projects. Um, but they will also put in, um, they will submit their abstract at the same time. We have a form for students to fill out their abstracts, so we have uniformity in the way the abstracts look. So when you register, please make sure that you have your abstract with you to be able to complete registration. The next segment of this presentation will cover these topics. So what's the role of a teacher or mentor or the parent or guardian? Generally speaking, it's guidance. It's helping your child or 
the student get through the entire process, again, from uh, the inception of the concepts for the project all the way to um, competing in the STEM fair itself, and if the student does well in the STEM fair, for competing in ensuing STEM fairs or the ones that we feed into. Our STEM fair feeds into the Bay Area Science Fair as well as the California State Science Fair. Um, teachers, mentors, parents, and guardians will also help children and students adhere to the rules and regulations, make sure they meet all expectations and deadlines, and provide basically any support that the students need to complete their project. And of course, first and foremost, to be a positive force in this child's life, meaning um, to be a good cheerleader. We accept two different kinds of projects in our STEM fair, individual and group. Individual projects are just that, students working um, by themselves on their projects, of course, with the help of a teacher or a parent, um, limited help, of course. Um, we also accept group projects. Um, this year, uh, we will be very reluctant to accept any group project with more than two students. Uh, what a group project means is not that each student in the group divides up the work among them such that each student will have 50% of the work. We think of it more as the project being much more complex, maybe twice as complex as an individual project. And then when the work is divided, each student would have basically the same amount of work to be done as a student in an individual project. So think about it that way when deciding whether you want to do the project on your own or whether you want to do it with your friends. Every student in a group project should have equal amount of work. So think of it that way. Here are the categories in our STEM fair. Behavioral science, biological science, material science, chemistry, earth and space and environmental science, math and software, physics, and engineering. During the registration project process, you will be noting the category in which you believe that your project should be categorized. Um, during the abstract reading um, event that takes place here at the county office, we will review all of the abstracts submitted and consider the category that the student listed. And if we deem necessary, we will recategorize that student's project. And please note that our decision is final and there is no appeal process. In terms of grade level participation, we have students from grades five through eight participating um, in all of the aforementioned categories. But in terms of high school, high school is considered one single group. So all the high school students will be put together in one area, whereas the grades five through eight students will be split up according to the different categories. And we have um, areas in, at the Hiller Aviation Museum dedicated to those different categories. There are several documents that are required to participate in our STEM fair. One of the most important ones we call the Science Review Committee form or the SRC form. Um, you can go to that website um, where I'm going to go right now to give you more information about who requires an SRC form. And this is very important for students who fall into these categories because the form, this SRC form, must be submitted online at the time of project registration. But that being said, there are several um, factors to which would lead a student to need an SRC form. Um, and um, many of uh, the students will, um, it might be too late for them to participate if the required forms are not submitted on time. Let me take you to this document. If you scroll down in the document, you will come to a flow chart. Please note that this document was not produced by the San Mateo County Office of Education. Um, and you'll see some phone numbers and email addresses listed there. So please do not um, contact those individuals that 
produce this document, but it is very useful for our purposes. So here's a flowchart titled, Do I Need SRC Pre-Approval Before I Can bring, Begin My Project? So think about the kind of project that you're doing. Do you have one that's a continuation from a project from last year that entered the STEM fair? Or if you are having people actually um, be involved in the STEM, in your project itself? So are you asking your friends or your family member questions? Or are you experimenting on yourself? Um, does your project involve mammals, like your pet? Um, does your project involve mold, fungus, bacteria, um, a virus, or like it says here, anything that can make you sick? Did you collect samples from the environment? Or are you doing anything with DNA? Uh, did you collect cells from people's cheeks or teeth or any kind of bodily fluid? Um, if the answer to any of those questions is yes, then you do need an SRC form. Um, we will not be accepting any projects with hazardous chemicals or done with uh, in any kind of dangerous way. Um, but um, that being said, we do have students that um, do work with drones or lasers um, so they would also have to submit an SRC form. As you can see here, there's uh, information about guns or gunpowder or prescription drugs or alcohol, or beer or wine, cigarettes or tobacco. Those projects will not be um, permitted to be submitted into the SMCOE STEM fair anyway. So um, please consider what your project is about and what it involves um, right at the onset of your project and make sure that you have proper documentation right from the onset. Um, other types of forms that you'll need, um, you'll need a form called the, uh, to, to uh, sign a form um, called the Rules, Regulations, and Release Form, the R-cubed form, also a permission to participate and a photo release form. Um, all those three forms, forms two, three, and four, um, will be at uh, the check-in itself um, at the STEM fair, on the first day of the STEM fair, on that Sunday. Um, so you don't need to worry about those. Um, you, would, you should review the rules, regulations, and release form as soon as you decide to participate in the STEM fair. And that form will be posted on our website. So this is an important... Um, part of our presentation um, as it relates to the types of projects, more specifically the kinds of projects you probably should avoid um, during the STEM fair, uh, in preparation for the STEM fair. Um, we receive lots of different kinds of projects from all of the eight categories I mentioned before. Um, many students will go to websites like sciencebuddies.org um, to, um, to get ideas for their websites, uh, for their websites, excuse me, for their projects. Um, but that being said, um, there's definitely some types of projects that are unlikely to be accepted by our STEM fair, um, especially with us knowing what kinds of caliber and quality of, of projects um, that are accepted uh, at the fairs that we feed into, like the Bay Area Science Fair, and the uh, California State Science Fair. Um, so let me go through a little bit of the details here. Let me give you some examples of projects which are unlikely to be accepted. Um, for example, the effect of colored light or music on plant growth, or the strength or absorbency of paper towels, um, optical illusions, um, planaria worm regeneration, or acid rain projects, or um, like very basic flight testing or battery life comparisons. I mean, it doesn't mean that they won't be accepted. They're just unlikely to be accepted. Um, if, if you include more variables or a higher N, or in other words, more subjects in your, uh, in your study, it's more likely that the project will be accepted. Um, but, you know, projects like the effect of cola or coffee on teeth, um, these projects have been done an un uncountable number of times. And unless you have some kind of a tweak or a creative way of addressing that 
to be honest, um, that project will unlikely be accepted into the SMCOE, SMCOE STEM Fair. Um, other kinds of projects that are unlikely to um, be accepted or ones that you should avoid are the ones where the, where the results are not clear and they're not clearly expressed in units such as growth or size, speed or volume. Um, you know, units are very important in science and um, projects that have this a piece of information not listed or if it's inconclusive um, in terms of what the judges or what we think you are actually trying to measure, um, that is a project that's likely to be excluded. And also, projects that are overly common. I mean, the follow um, for example, you might re meet all the requirements, um, but these kinds of projects that I'm going to like give you some examples of are just they just don't tend to win awards. Um, also, with frequent frequently um, done projects, um, the acceptance to the to the fair itself may only be granted if there's some kind of a twist, like I mentioned earlier, and there's also some. Um, solid adherence to the scientific method. Um, for example, um, anything involving microwaving marshmallow peeps or plant growth on different fertilizer or the effect of Diet Coke on Mentos, um, these are very common and uh, these kinds of projects should not be done by upper middle school or high school students. Um, just keep in mind that when you're doing a science fair project, um, you need to be adding something to it that you really want to study and you don't believe um, is really overly studied at all. These are the kinds of projects that interest judges and these are the kinds of projects that are more likely to win awards. If you have questions about the judging process itself, uh, we've revamped the system uh, or the system that we used for judging last year. Um, if you want to know uh, what, how we inform judges of our expectations of them, just go to YouTube and uh, search for how to be a great STEM fair judge and a video will come up um, that was produced by us. That's me right there. Um, so students will get a better idea of the judging process itself um, or, ex or at least what we expect of the judges by watching this video. The way we um, held our judging process last year and the way we'll be doing it again this year is that students will uh, stand next to their projects uh, and then the judges will come in and you will receive um, at the very minimum of two interviews from two different judges. At that point, the judges have already read your abstract and have likely already looked at your project board during a pre-judging period. So they're really there just to get to know you and your um, enthusiasm and excitement for your project and to, to learn about how well you know your own project. And they'll be asking you questions about um, possibly about future projects that might stem from your project itself. So it behooves you to really understand uh, the process that you went through and be able to answer any question that a judge might have about your project. Um, during that night, uh, during the judging period, um, you will not see any kind of systematic way that a judge behaves. They'll be jumping around from one project to the next. Um, but rest assured, you will receive at the very minimum of two interviews during that night. After the judging process, um, judging night is over, the judges decide um, the placement of awards and you will be notified of that award during the awards uh, during the open house um, event on the following night, which you are expected to attend. Of course, it um, it shouldn't have to be said, but I feel that um, there is a, a place to talk about plagiarism. Um, plagiarism is strictly prohibited during. Uh, during the STEM fair, all projects should be done by the student, him or herself, with minimum input from teachers or from mentors. Again, the role of the teacher or the mentor is to support the student, but not to do the project for the student or, in many cases, with the student. 
Um, projects taken directly from the internet, internet are considered plagiarized, and they may be disqualified. Judges may identify projects similar to examples posted on the internet, um, and they will be ranked low for that lack of creativity. Um, again, like I said before, you can go to sciencebuddies.org as a source of inspiration, but the idea for your project should be original. Uh, getting inspiration from the internet or from past project is fine, but make sure that you are doing the work and you are adhering to the scientific method. The scientific fraud and, and misconduct that are not condoned at any level of research or competition. And this includes plagiarism, forgery, or use or presentation of somebody else's work as your own or fabricating data. Fraudulent projects will fail to qualify for any fair that we feed into, and that project will be removed from our STEM fair. So I don't mean to end on a sour note, but um, if you have any questions whatsoever about, the, about participating in the STEM fair or about the process that we use, uh, I feel like the best way for you to get in contact with me is by, going to, uh, by emailing me at dmarcus at smcoe.org. Again, my name is Darone Marcus. Um, if you feel uh, you, your question is, has not been uh, adequately answered or if you need more information, if you'd like to speak to me directly, please feel free to call me at 650-802-5405. But again, probably the best way to reach me is via email. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I hope I was able to answer your questions. Um, if you have further questions, please visit www.stemfair.net. All the information about the STEM Fair is included there. And again, you can contact me if you need to. Good luck, and I look forward to seeing you at the STEM Fair.